Eternal and always, God, our Father, we come to you this morning in the name of Jesus. Lord God, thank you for another opportunity to call upon your holy and your righteous name. We thank you, Lord, because we realize that we didn't deserve to be here. But, Lord, it was your grace and your mercy which allowed our golden moments to roll on a little while longer. Lord, we appreciate you for that. We thank you for looking beyond our faults, Lord, and seeing our needs. And Lord, we had a need to, Lord God, to come out, Lord God, and to, Father God, to just fellowship, Lord God, with your saints today via the radio. We thank you, Father, for another opportunity that you've given us, Lord, to just be on this side of the grave, realizing, Lord, that we didn't deserve to be here. But, Lord, it was your grace and your mercy yes, which sir. allowed us this opportunity. Yes, sir. And we want to say thank you. Thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for bringing us down through another week, a week of trials and tribulations, a week of hurt and heartaches. But yet and still, Lord, we're still here. We thank you for things being as well as they are. Yeah. We thank you, Lord, because we realize that, Lord, if Satan had his way, mm-hmm. God, things would be a whole lot worse. But, Lord, it was you, Father God, who told death to sit down somewhere and behave. My Lord. You, Lord God, who kept the enemy at bay, Father God, and he just couldn't have his way in our life. Mm. But, Lord, you protected us. You watched over us. You, Lord, you cared for us as only you can. And, Lord, we want to say thank you. Thank you. We want to take this time, Father, just say we appreciate you. Lord, we don't thank you enough. We don't give you everything that you, Lord God, are deserving of. But, Lord, we just want to stop right now and say, Lord, that we love you. Yeah. Lord, we appreciate you. Lord, we're grateful for you today. And, Lord, we just thank you for being our help, for being our strength, for being our way making, our strong tower, for being our protector, for being that for us when no one else was. We thank you for being the lift up our head, Lord, the dry of our tears, Lord God. We thank you for being the bread when we were hungry yeah. and the water when we were thirsty. We want, Lord, whatever our needs are, you meet that need. And we just thank you for it today. And we praise you and we honor you and lift you up in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, as we go into this study today, we pray and ask that you will, Lord, give us power to proclaim the truth of your word today. We thank you in advance of what you're going to do. And we just praise you for being who you are, the God of our salvation. Lord, we pray for our pastor today, wherever he may be. Lord, strengthen and encourage his heart today. Lord, keep him in your keeping care. and Keep using him, Lord God. To uplift your holy and righteous name. Yeah, Lord. Lord, that he may be able to preach and teach your divine word to your people. And Lord, not just him only, Lord God, but all those who name the name of Christ. God, I pray right now that you would just strengthen them in the inner man. Yeah. That they may be able to run on and see what the end's going to be. Mom. And Lord, I thank you, Lord God. And we bless your name. We appreciate you. We honor you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you today. God bless you today. Truly, it's a blessing for us to be here. Amen. This is Deacon Sacone, Prince of the Trusted Partners Ministry of the Liberty Missionary Baptist Church. But the Reverend Dr. Clyde May Jr. is our very fine pastor. We want to thank God for Pastor May and, as always, for sharing at his time. Thank God for Reverend Robinson for his uh, encouragement. And thank God for the Liberty Missionary Baptist Amen. Church. Amen. I oftentimes said it, and it's still true. I believe it's one of God's greatest churches. Amen. But I also want to thank God for you. Those of you who are taking the time out to tune in and to and to hear what God has laid on our heart, we don't take it for granted. There's so many other things you could have been doing, but you decided to turn on the radio. And we thank God for giving you that mind just to hear what he has to say to us today. If you have your Bibles, would you turn to Mark chapter 2? And we're going to look at a couple of passages in there, but just to, if you want to block this out as a study... Mark chapter 2, verse 1 through 12. But for our for the conservation of time, as they oftentimes say, we're going to look at the third verse, which says, And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. Amen. Amen. The subject for our study today is where to go when you fail. All right. Where to go when you fail. Milo. Somebody may be writing this down, so I'm going to say it again. Where to go when you fail. Amen. Man. Amen. We've all seen videos of athletes after the championship game and 
normally the reporters will come up to him and ask him to say, you know, you, you just won the Super Bowl or you just won the NBA Finals or you just won the World Series. Where are you going to go now or what are you going to do? All right. And most of us remember there was a time when it was just commonplace where they would just holler out, I'm going to Disneyland. Mm hmm Well, well, we all know what they say about going while you're winning, but 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 my question today for us is is where do you go? Uh huh. When you fail. Where do you go when you fail? Mm. Our text today, we find Jesus in Capernaum, right. uh, in a house sitting, and and he and he is taking the time to 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 in fact to actually preach and and teach unto the people in that city. And it was noise that he was in the city. That means that that the rumor reel was running, and that. And that, and that the grapevine was on fire. They were telling people about the Lord being in town. Mm -hmm. And when some people heard about it, they had a friend yes, sir. that was sick of the palsy. Mm -hmm. That's what our key verse comes in on when it says, And they came unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, who was born of four. Now, in the King James Version, that last little section would say, which was born of four, it simply means that four people carried him, carried this individual, carried the person that was sick of the palsy. Four people. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, well, why, you know, why was it four? Why wasn't it two? Well, 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 yeah, maybe the individual was too heavy for just two people to carry him. And then if they would have got three people, then one person, you know, would have had more weight on them than the other. But yet and still, there were four people that brought him yeah. unto Jesus. Yes, sir. Now, 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 these are some types of friends that you and I need to have. Amen. When you can't get there on your own, when you can't get there by yourself, when, yes, sir. when you don't have enough strength, enough fortitude to make you need somebody in your life. Uh-huh. That's willing to take you to the king. Yes, sir. Because they love you. Mm -hmm. We need friends like these. And not only that, check this out. If you don't need them, you need to be one. All right. You need to be the type of person that will carry your friend, your your coworker, your spouse, your child, your in fact, your pastor, your deacon, your church member, your associate, your acquaintance. You need to be the type of person that is willing to take the time out of your schedule. Yes, sir. And just lift somebody else up. To the Lord. Uh -huh. uh, these these friends, these four friends, they took the time to take their friend unto Jesus. Yes, sir. But notice, notice it, notice that these were some determined people. First of all, they were dependable. Yeah. Because they they were there and they and they got it. But then they were determined because if you read a little later in that passage, it says in verse four, and when they were come nigh unto him for the press. They uncovered the roof oh, where he was. Yes, sir. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. Right. Not only were they dependable, they were determined. They, they, they said, look, we're not going to let these little obstacles get in our way. I, yeah, I know there are a lot of people here. I know we can hardly get through, but look, we don't come too far. All right. And I'm not, and, and, and you know, you, you, you know, you know, you know, <laughs> I think about this, you know, I'm sure that they didn't want to just take him back the way he was. No. They said, look, we done come too far That's right. by faith. Yes, sir. And we're going to keep going. They were determined. They were even willing to say, look, I don't care. We'll pay the Harris roof fix. <laughs> maybe, maybe one of them was a roof for himself. He said, look, look we just tear it up. But look, we're going to get our friend to the Lord. Yeah. Being able to have a determined friend, somebody who is willing to go to bat for you, somebody who's willing to stand by you and stand with you. Yeah. Those are prices. Those individuals there are ones that you need to keep close to your heart. Yes, sir. Because because they're they're help to, they'll not only be with you in good times, mm. but they'll be with you in bad times. Yes, sir. We've all heard the term fair weather friends. Mama. Means that they're a friend while the sun is shining like it is today. Yes, sir. But when the storm comes and, and when the wind is blowing, they, they are nowhere to be found. All right. But this person, this person in our text today, he didn't have fair weather friends. No. Nah. He had friends who were willing, in fact, to be dependable and determined. 
to get him to where he needed to be. So, 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 as we look on in these passages, scripture verse 5 says, When Jesus saw their faith, mm -hmm. he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Now, now, Jesus looked at the faith of his friends. All right. What does that say? What, what, what does that say to us today? That look, you can have faith for somebody else deliverance. That's right, that's right. You can have faith for somebody else healing. Yes, sir. You can have faith for somebody else being set free. If you are that type of person, you can believe God for somebody else. Amen. You can even believe God for their salvation. And what I mean by that is that you just keep praying and bringing them before him, and God will move on their heart. Yes, sir. And bring them to a point to where they'll make their decision of repentance. Amen. But notice how Jesus, he saw their faith, sure but, he, but, but he said unto the sick of the palsy. Sure he saw the faith of his friends, but he... But Jesus spoke the blessing on his man. Amen. But and, and and obviously from what Christ said, his condition was a result of sin. Mama. Notice what he says. He says, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. I don't know what this man had done. I don't know what he had been through. I don't know what he had he had done to cause this. But we can we can take it from what Jesus said mm. that his condition was a result of sin. Mm. Now, 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 you and I both know that there are a lot of people that will stand and sit around. Mm -hmm. And they'll question, why are you where you are? What have you done? Why are you? Well, look, his friends wasn't worried about all of it. No, no, no. His friends, those who were truly his friends. They don't, see, it, and see, this is why you need to have some people in your life. Yes, sir. That, that, look, they don't need to know all the ins and outs of what you're going through. No, no. But they just need to care enough about you. Uh huh. To be able to bring you to the king. Yes, sir. But verse 6 says, But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, saying, Why would this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? Huh? They were challenging the Lord's. His divinity. All right. In fact, but they didn't say anything out loud now. Mm -hmm. They just thought it within themselves. They reasoned in their heart, why yeah. is he speaking blasphemy? Nah. And you know, this is what I like about the Lord. Look at verse 8. He said, and immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within, their, within themselves, he said unto them, why reason ye these things in your heart? You know, people, uh, the Jesus, he was able to, he was able to read their hearts, not just one at a time. Oh, no. <laughs> and that's what let me know that he is God alone. All right. He can listen to all of them at the same time. Mm. And not only that, but he can address them. Because verse 9, he says, Whether it is easy to say to the sick of palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, take up thy bed, and walk. Jesus asked the question to them. He said, What's easier to say? <laughs> is it easier to say you've been forgiven of your sins, or is it easier to say you've been here? And what he was basically saying was that, look, in order for you to understand who I am, yeah. in order for you to understand that I am the I am, uh -huh. the one that was sent from the Father to earth to show you how to live, in order for you to understand that, I'm going to show you something. Right. But verse 10 says, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on the earth to forgive sins. He said unto the sick of Paul, I say unto thee, Arise, take up thy bed, and go thy way unto thy own house. Hmm. Verse 12 is, is to kick in because it says, And immediately he arose up and took up his bed and went and went from, in fact, before them all, insomuch that they were amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. Hey, no, Jesus, he settled the <laughs> issue. Or should have said of the issue. This should have said of the issue in their heart as to who he was. Yes, sir. Because not only was he able to forgive sins, my, my. but to heal this man's body. Yes, sir. Now, what is more important, sins be forgiven or your body being healed? But Jesus, he wanted to make sure, look, I want you to understand, because you couldn't see the forgiveness of sin part, uh -huh. I'm going to let you see the healing part. Yes, sir. Because the healing is the natural, but the forgiveness of sin is the supernatural. Uh-huh. Jesus then, he, he talks... He talks to those who are who are 
who are critical. Uh huh. Who are critical. And, 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 and you know, as I read passages of scripture like this, one of the things that come to mind is, where am I? <laughs> Am I the one laying on the bed? Am I the one that's sick or palsy? Am I the one who's sin sick? Am I the one who needs to be taken to the king? Or am I the friend? All right. Am I the person that's going to bear him up, that's going to take him to the Lord? Or or am I one of the critics? All right. Sitting there, thinking in my heart, saying to myself, what does she think she's doing? Yeah. What does he think he's doing? Uh -huh. He all messed up. He can't do this. He can't. But 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 see see see. Sometimes we'll sit and we'll and we'll look at these passages of scripture, uh -huh. and we'll fail to see ourselves in the Word of God. Free. This one here. This yeah. this tells us. This tells us that look. We need to be careful. Yeah. As to how we look at what God is doing, because we don't know the ins and the outs no, of a situation. That's why you can't just you can't just go and, 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 and just and just pass judgment or something. Even 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 if you see what you think you saw, it's best to find out. Our assumptions more than likely are wrong. Uh -huh. That's why they're called assumptions. Take the time to find out the facts. My, my. Find out what's going on. Don't just let what people say or what people talk about sway your opinion. Sway your sway. The way you look at a situation. Uh -huh. Find out for yourself. But see, these people didn't know, but they were criticizing Christ. All right. They were criticizing Jesus. They weren't, in fact, they weren't too concerned about the man. No. They were looking at what Christ was doing. Yes, sir. That's when you have those people who are just steep and stuck in religion. <laughs> they they think they right and everybody else wrong. All right. But look, I tell you, see, and see, God, God has a way of taking the foolish things of this world. And using them to confound the wise. Man, think he know it. You don't know nothing compared to God. No. I don't know nothing compared to God. And you know what I've learned? I've learned just let God be God. Amen. And we do our part. Yes, sir. We be his children. We we be obedient. We follow him. Yes, we sir. do what he tell us to do. We ain't got to figure. God never asked us to figure it out. No. But, but you know what he did? He told us to trust him. Trust him in spite of what we're going through. Yes, sir. In spite of what we're facing. In spite of what we're dealing. Uh -huh. I like what David said in Psalms 122. He said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Lord. These friends, these four individuals, they, they took their friend. They, they took him. They, they, they picked him up from where he was. They took time out and they took him to the king. Yes, sir. They took him to Jesus. David said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And you know what? People oftentimes, you can say what you want to about the church. All right. But God, God himself has said, look, this is my institution. This is my organization. This is the body to which I'm coming back for. Be a part of the body of Christ. Yes, sir. David said, I was glad when he said, let us go into the house of the Lord. And you know what? You should be able to find the Lord in the church. Somebody, right. take somebody, invite somebody to come to church. If you got to go pick them up, go get them and take them to the king. Invite them to come to the house of the Lord. And they'll get the help that they need in the time of need. My question to you today is, do you know him for yourself? Have you tried it for yourself? Do you have somebody in your life that can take you to the king? That can take you unto the Father. Do you know somebody? Have you tried them for yourself? Have you given them your all? This is Medica Sakona, Prince of the Trusted Partners Ministry of the Liberty Missionary Baptist Church, where the Reverend Dr. Clyde May Jr. is our very fine pastor. And I didn't want to end this, this radio broadcast without saying a very special happy birthday to my son, to me and my wife's son, Jonathan James Andrew Prince, who will be six on Monday. Son, I love you. Your mother loves you. We all love you. We thank God for you. And you know what? We found out that Jonathan means gift from God. Right. And you have been that to us. And we're proud of you, son. We appreciate God for you today. We just want to thank God for this opportunity and for a chance to share this word with you. Now I return it back over to the hands of Brother Carter.